And one of the things I really, really, really super love about the way that Coat works is that Coat lets you paint PBR shaders. And if you don't, want, don't know what PBR is, it is physically or physical based rendering. With that, I can paint this physical accurate type of materials. So if I wanted to, I'm going to go in here and you want to make sure, and you see I just clicked on a shader and it's actually making me a curvature map. So if you don't know what curvature maps are, they're amazing. Curvature maps give you the edging of your, um, give, they give you the edging of your model. So you, you'll, you get a calculation of where the edges of your model exist. And right now it's using OpenCL, which is really cool. It's using OpenCL to bake out my occlusion for me. Now, I'm, this rig, I'm going to actually change this rig to an AMD based rig. Right now it is an Intel, it's an Intel um, NVIDIA based rig. And I'm going to change it to a, it's going to become a AMD based rig. AMD does a lot better at compute than than uh, NVIDIA does in my opinion so but you can see this is what my shader is gonna look like so it shows me what my shader is gonna look like I can turn down the depth of the shader so you can see a lot of things preview on this right when you do it which I think is super super cool um, I can change my shader out so this is why I said it won't take us long to get to the point of being able to finish this off like this is gonna be super quick to finish um, you know I've got all these metals in here I've got camos in here so I've got things that I can layer on top of each other and look at that that's pretty freaking cool that I can come through here and lay this stuff down super fast super quick um, and then get these now you can make your own shaders you don't have to use this the shaders they have in here just for sake of time we're gonna use just the shaders that come with 3D code, but you could come through here and make your own freaking shader. You don't have to use the shaders that they have. And I can turn on glossiness and see what the glossiness specularity looks like on this, too. So that looks pretty decent. Let's scale. You can scale the, the texture over the whole model. So I can rescale it. And you start to see the repeating pattern show up, but. I can make this super large and scale it over top of this. And what I want to do at this point, I'm going to minimize that. But you'll notice that I have a, and I think I might have closed it, or I didn't have it open with this particular window set. There actually is a layer in here. I go to my windows, let's see, pop ups and paint objects there we go so my paint objects I can once again turn off things so I can turn off pieces of this and the reason why my interface looks really weird and really crowded is because usually I have my panels off on my other screens and I don't have everything kind of in here together so you can see look at that it lets me now if you're wondering what this darkness is this is the occlusion so this is the baked occlusion that it was baked when I told it to bake occlusion so it baked occlusion into this so now there is a sense of shading and shadowing already baked into my model if I turn off my occlusion layer right here you can see there is there's with the occlusion and you want to really run occlusion occlusion is very helpful to have on your model so it's not like you don't want to have occlusion you, you do so I'm gonna turn off my stock and turn off the magazine because that's a different color but most of the other parts of the weapon are similar in color. The barrel's a little bit different in color. Let's turn that off. So this is going to be the main body. And I'm going to paint over all of this. Now I can do this two ways. I can actually paint and paint by hand and do it all by hand and be like paint, 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 paint. Or I can just come in here and make a new layer double click on that layer and, and, and uh, I can say this is going to be PS90 base hit OK and I can go and get my paint bucket 
and you'll see that my paint bucket actually lets me do some really cool things like layer or I can say fill the entire layer or I can say object so I can say I want to paint the entire object and choose the object I want to paint so I can hit OK and you'll see it'll paint the whole object that I've chosen see that BAM so I can paint I painted everything in one fell swoop that that was it for just that part because if you notice if you remember the handle or the receiver are separate things so I can go say do the same thing and I can say I want to paint the receiver and I can say object and I want to paint the handle and boom that's painted as well and then I'm gonna go and get a rubber so go to my rubber shaders go get a rubber and I'm gonna use like this yeah, this rubber right here is, will work just fine. And this one's going to be for object, and this is going to be for the handle. And make it that rubber. Oh, not the handle. Sorry about that. It's for the trigger. I don't know what I was thinking about. So, trigger. So, the trigger has its stuff on it. This is ready to go. And you look at the top part of my receiver, it's black like this because the magazine goes on top of that. So let's go look at plastics. And let's actually find like I'll use this plastic here. And let's say object magazine. Or actually let's do something that pops. Let's do a red. Let's do like a racer red. That's gonna be on the magazine again. So boom. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, buddy. Got that red uh that red mag in there. And then we got the barrel. So let's the barrel once again would be a metal. I think the barrels are aluminium, I believe, but I'm just going to use like this right here and say barrel. That's really shiny. Let's take that down a notch. You wouldn't want to walk out there with such a shiny barrel. You get shot. I like that. A little bit worn, a little worn conditions to it. And and whatnot. Ka 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 ka. That red uh, magazine's badass. Care what nobody says. That thing's bad. It's badass right there. So I can see that I've got my kind of got my uh, my gun, and it's kind of ready to go almost right we got the clip and got all that stuff everything's all shiny on it I need to make sure this is gonna be a two-sided shader so that's kind of all what it needs to be um, oh yeah let's turn back on the stock haven't done anything to the stock the stock is plastic as well so let's say plastic I want to do a softer plastic I don't want to do that same this is plastic like over this so object and then this is going to be for the stock and boom there's a the stock so you can see what's really nice is it gives you this look of you know the rounded curvatures I'm getting scratches and all kind of things are happening to the edging of my model which is really cool which is something that we we could we could always do but we had to it took longer right it took longer to do stuff like this before so this is like a little bit of a war torn p90 it's been years of service strong weapon ready to go so this is all ready to go in my opinion i'm going to take this and i'm going to export this i'm going to say export object and textures and I'm going to export it in an fbox file and I'm just going to call this PS90 textured 
and then save it. And when it saves, it pops up and it asks me, do I want to save targas? How do I want to save it? Do I want to save the color map, roughness map, metalness map? Yes, I do. My tangent space normals, yes, I do. The AO, the export, the curvature, yes, I want all that. And I also wanted to give a little bit of padding to my UVs. So hit OK. Now that that's done, my model is being exported out as an FBox file. So this is how, this is my workflow to get my files into FBox format. I work on them inside of Silo, save them out as an OBJ, bring them into 3D Coat. When inside of 3D Coat, I unwrap them. Unwrapping them in here, uh, saving my UV set, and then I do my painting in here. Now, I don't always just use the shaders that are built inside of Coat. I do, I do also do custom painting. If you look at my models, uh, some of my model work on, um, on, oh my God, it blew, just blew my mind right now. But if you look at some of my, my custom models on Behance, you'll see that I, I do also do custom painting and don't just use the built-in shaders. Um, now on the weapons that I've got on my Behance site, all those are done with the shaders that are directly inside of Coat. So that's that. So in the next video, we'll be opening up Marmoset, and I'll show you how to set this up. It will take literally like 10 minutes to set this up for a render, and we'll set it up and render it out and be uploading this to Behance. And we'll see you in the next video.